Hi there, I'm Yvonne DeSellis, and I'm sorry that there's nobody to look at, but there will be very soon, I promise. I just have to get into camera view here. I hope you can see me, and I'm going to start off by saying I really hope the sound is better than it was on the video I did the other day. I think I just did this video either yesterday or the day before, and there was a clicking sound in the background, which I think was from a fan, which is because it was over 90 degrees, and there's no way I can turn the cooling off when it's as hot as it is right now. It's, it's really hot today too, but thankfully I'm in an air conditioned room. So again, I'm going to do a recap of the video I did the other day, which is the Donna Eden Feel Good Daily Energy Routine with some things included. First thing I want to include is something I don't remember who I learned this from. I learned this years ago. And if I find the link to the video where I learned this, I'll put it in the description. I wish I could remember his name. He was really good. The only thing about his video that I didn't love was that it took almost 60 minutes before he actually started showing the exercises. So with that said, I'm going to show the very first one. You want to take your hand, either left hand or right hand, whichever you feel more comfortable with. I'm left-handed, which is probably why I use my left hand, which this probably looks like my right because it's a mirror image video, but this is my left hand. Index finger to pinkies together, thumb underneath, kind of like a duck bill sort of, and you just take the tips, not in any further, just the tips because you could hurt yourself if you go back too far. Tips of the fingers and pulse it. Squeeze it with the other hand. This is a really good negative energy behavior replacement. It's also really good during times of stress. Just for example, I've used this very successfully in the past. I'm a white knuckle patient when I go to the dentist, meaning I grip the handrail so hard that it hurts my hands. Doing this instead, I find to be very helpful. So that is a non-tapping EFT technique. EFT, by the way, stands for emotional freedom technique. I learned a bunch of EFT taps from Nick Ortner, who you can find YouTube videos from. He has something called the Tapping Solution, and I will put a link to Nick Ortner in the description of this video when I am able to. So again, just squeezing the tips of your fingers is a really good one. But now I want to go into the three thumps, I believe she calls it, also including some of the taps that I learned from the tapping solution. Her three thumps, or four thumps actually, is one on the cheekbones, just with index finger and middle finger. You just literally thump your cheekbones, just for a little while. I don't usually do this for more than like, say, 10, 15 times. And then the chin. Um, I believe another one she does, in, instead of just where the chin is, is right in the skin between the upper lip and the nose. You can tap there. You can also tap your eyebrows. You can do one eyebrow. You can do both eyebrows, the outer corner or the inner corner, whatever you feel comfortable with. You can also do the top of the head. I don't do the top of the head one because I get headaches a lot, but you can do the top of the head. This one I learned on the EFT thing. They call it the karate chop. It's the side of the hands. So that's one that I learned. I think Donna Eden has done this one as well. Another one that I learned from Donna Eden that I do not do because I have problems with back pain and I taught someone how to do this next one. I believe it's called spleen tap. It's on the spleen meridian. So the spleen meridians on the sides, you go down to your lowest rib bone where that is and tap there very gingerly or very lightly because you can, if you have back pain problems, you can unwittingly give yourself more back pain if you do this one. I don't do the spleen tap, but I guess this is supposed to be good for digestion aid and also for energy. Like I said, though, I don't do this one. I'm not wild about this. You can also go underneath. I think it's the center of the nipple on the pec, so you can also tap there. And again, it's that lowest rib bone and you can tap there for a spleen tap. So that's another one. Um, another one that Donna Eden mentioned, which is really good, is the K27 points. I'm trying to avoid my microphone because I know it'll make a racket if I go anywhere near it, which it's probably doing right now. So I apologize in advance if it's doing that. But the K27 points you get to by tracing your collarbone from the back to where the points almost meet in the front, you'll feel two little divots right where the points meet. You should feel divots, I should say. There's two little soft spots. Most people have soft spots here. If you don't have soft spots, don't feel bad. Not everyone on the planet has it, but it should be relatively easy to find your K27 points. Please let me know in the comments below if you're not sure where they are. If you're not, I will try to show a video which will show you where the K27 points are. But that's another spot that you can tap the K27 points. You can also do the thymus thump, which is right at the center of the chest, pretty much right where the heart chakra is, and you thump there. I'm trying not to do it too hard because I don't want to make a racket on the microphone, but you can thump it or you can do the Tarzan tap on the sides. That's really good. That helps with breathing. 
Um, if you run up a flight of stairs and you find yourself out of breath, doing the thymus thump can help. So those are the thumps that I wanted to show you. I'm hoping I don't forget anything. I'm really going to try very hard not to forget anything here. But I'm going to just go over some of the easier ones first, and then I'll go into some of the slightly more complex ones. Next one is called the hookup. You put your middle finger where your navel is, your other middle finger between your eyebrows. This is where the third eye spot is. Push in and up and just hold it just for a moment. Take a breath in with your nose. Rise up when you inhale and sink when you exhale out through the mouth. And by the way, um, the most important thing about breathing for our purposes is when you breathe in, have your tongue touching the roof of your mouth. If you do not like to switch between oral and nasal, if you find that too distracting, breathe however is comfortable to you because we don't want you to be distracted by the breathing. The most important thing with the breathing is to have your tongue touching the roof of your mouth whenever you inhale. It's a number of reasons. Main ones for our purposes is to keep you from getting dry mouth and also to help with stress. But again, so the hookup is finger in the navel and on the third eye in up and breathe in and out while you're holding this position. And again, you don't need to hold this for very long. I'd say 10 to 15 seconds at minimum is good. That's a really good one. It hooks up your upper and lower energy centers. So northern and southern energy centers. The next one is the zip up, which you put your hands together at your pubic bone and you literally zip up, go up, 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 trying once again to avoid the microphone, go up over the chin, go to the sides of your lips and make a locking motion. And that's pretty much it for that one. That is the zip up. That's a really, really good one. Um, speaking of joining hemispheres of your body together, this joins the left and right hemispheres instead of northern and southern. You go to your shoulder and just literally drag across with your hand to your hip. When you get to your hip, shake off. Then go to the other side, drag to the opposite hip, and shake it off. That is the shoulder to hip crossover. That's an easy way of doing what I'm gonna show you next, the cross crawl. I actually did this one standing the other day, but I wanna do this one sitting down now, so I'm getting a chair. Sorry if I'm out of camera view right now, but I want you all to see the alternative version of this. Um, because most of the people I know are disabled and in wheelchairs or just disabled and have trouble doing this standing. So I hope you can see me. This is the sitting version of the cross crawl. Actually, you know what? I'll do it both ways. The, the standing version of the cross crawl, it's very simple. You just do this. It's an exaggerated march and you move your arms in the opposite direction of where your legs are going. And you can do this as many times as you want. I personally don't like doing this one standing either. I do this one sitting. So sitting, it's pretty much the same thing sitting as it is standing. You do the exaggerated march sitting, but you bring your hands into the opposite directions. So if your legs are going up, your hands are going down. So this leg goes up, this arm and hand go down, and other way. So again, you're just trying to connect your left and your right hemispheres with this one. And this one is another one where you do it if it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't feel right to you, you don't have to do that one. But that is the cross crawl. I'm going to go to the next, the next one. I'm going to do the rest of these standing, but these are all exercises you can do seated or lying on your back. You do not have to do any of these standing up. And remember, also, you don't have to do all of these exercises. Just do the ones that feel right to you. This one, next one I'm going to do is called the Wayne Cook posture. This is good for a lot of things. It's a good de-stressor. It's also very good. I think she said it's good for people who have different disorders because it can help with lowering stress levels. I guess in particular, this is supposed to help people who have dyslexia. Not 100% sure why, but again, it's the Wayne Cook posture. And there are alternate versions. And actually, you know what? I'm going to do this one sitting down as well because you do not have to do this one standing up. I did this one standing and I found myself getting a little bit dizzy. So I'm going to do this one sitting. Basically, you're going to cross your arms. I get asked often, which arm do I know to put on top? And that's a very simple answer is without thinking about it, just put one arm over the other. Whatever feels right to you, again, to me, it's probably because I'm left-handed. My left arm over my right arm feels better to me. So put one arm over the other, and whichever arm you have over up top, you're going to do the same thing with your legs. You're going to cross your legs, but you're going to cross them opposite the way you have your arms crossed. So since my left arm is on top, I'm going to put my right leg 
over. So my right leg's crossed over my left and my left arm is crossed over my right. And then you clasp your hands together, bend your elbows and bring your hands to your heart chakra. Breathe in, out through the mouth. And as you're breathing out, bring your hands together, bring your thumbs together in particular and bring them to the bridge of your nose. Look up a little bit and hold this now just for one breath in. And then on the breath out, bring your fingers to the center of your forehead, push in and drag across until you get to the temples. And if you wish, you can give your temples a rub here. This is a really good spot because this is where the triple warmer ends. This is really good for helping with headaches, which I will go into in a later video, but this is a really good one. And this is where you end the move. So when you're done, just rub your hands together and shake them out to get rid of any negative energy you may have just gotten by accident. And since that one ends in what is kind of like the start of the, I'm trying to remember what this one is called. I was going to say cross crawl, but this is the crown pull. So this is what we're going to go to do next. We're going to do the crown pull next. Before I go on with this though, just so you know, I'm not going to be touching the top of my head as I go down and into the back. You just want to keep your fingers within your energy field, which is about an inch and a half to two and a half inches away from your body. So you start off at the center of your forehead, press in, pull apart to your temples. And then go up a little higher, push in, apart, push in, apart, and then just keep going down to the back of your head, push in, pull apart, go to about where your head meets your neck, pull apart. I go down all the way until I get to where my shoulders are and then just shake it out. So that is the crown pull. I just want to make sure I don't leave anything out. Um, we did the cross. Oh, I do want to start. I want to finish this off with the last one. This is a really good one. Um, this last one is called the lymphatic flush. This is a really good one and this is fine to do by itself. If you don't want to do any of the other exercises, if you didn't feel anything from any of the exercises, it's fine to just do this one. This one's called the lymphatic flush and this is a really good way from for clearing toxins that build up. Toxins tend to build up in our bodies overnight and this basically helps your body clear the toxins. You want to massage by the way, sorry if you get tired of the word vigorously. I'm going to be saying that a lot because I've learned things this way and I've heard it a lot myself. But we're going back to those K27 points. Massage them vigorously. Just for a few, let's say 10 to 15 seconds. And then you go out about an inch. And there should be two more soft spots out here. These are the governing points to your K27. Massage that vigorously. Then go out to where your arms meet with your torso on both sides with your knuckles. Go all the way down and then go to the other side, all the way down. Then go out to the sides of the chest up top. And again, vigorously or tough love massage towards the center. Then you're going to go underneath your pecs again out to the sides and vigorously massage to the center. I am going to stand for the rest of this. Next, you're gonna go underneath your rib cage and I just dig with my fingers. Dig, AKA vigorously massage underneath the rib cage, go all the way out to the sides, then come back out to the sides with your knuckles and massage in towards the center. Then you go about an inch over your navel and I just dig with my fingers. I do the massage starting here and you just work your way down and you just keep working your way down all the way down till you get to your pubic bone. Once you get to your pubic bone, you're gonna go out to the sides here. And I should have mentioned this before too. You may hit some sensitive spots when you're doing this. Um, I did have someone tell me they got sensitive spots right on their clavicle actually. Um, it's not abnormal to find sensitive spots, particularly when you're doing the hips. You go all the way down to about an inch over the knee. And then you widen your stance and you go in between the legs and you'll find sensitive spots here as well. Go to about an inch over the knee, stop, rub your hands together and shake them out. And that way you get rid of any negative energy you just picked up. As I said before, I'm going to sit one more time. You may hit negative spots when you're doing these things. That's normal. Um, actually with all energy healing, especially energy healing that involves vigorous massages, you might find sensitive spots that is not abnormal. Don't be alarmed if you hit a spot that's uncomfortable. I mean, if you hit a spot that really hurts, I would recommend not doing it. 
but if you hit a spot that just it's just really uncomfortable it probably corresponds to another part of your body that's hurting just as an example i partic i have really bad pain on the right side of my lower back and i found a spot that corresponds to it i was amazed at how much it hurts it's actually on my calf on the side right here I can just feel it with my finger. I'm not even pressing in that hard. That really hurts. But if you can loosen up this pain in this other spot that corresponds to that pain spot, you might be able to actually release the pain. So I'm really hoping that was helpful for you. More than anything, I really hope that the sound was not bad on that one like it was on my last video. I also ask that if you do like the video, please let me know in the comments down below subscribe, smash the like button, and if you know anyone that this video could help, I would really appreciate it if you could share this with them. That would be wonderful, and it would help my channel and me a whole lot. Again, though, I really hope the sound on this is good. I'm not going to put this up unless this sounds better than the last video I did was. So once again, thank you for joining me. Peace and light. Namaste. And I'm sending Reiki energy your way right now. Thanks so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. I know your time is valuable and I know you're probably very busy. I do hope you'll be back to see me again though. And I thank you again. I'm going to go out of camera view one more time, but I thank you one more time. Or as always, I thank you. If you're new, I hope you'll be back. And if you're not new, if you're one of my subscribers, I love you guys. You've done more than put me on the map. You've really helped me monetize my channel and everything else. So thank you once again, all of you for your time. Cheers. And I'm just going to chat while I walk over to turn this off. But thank you once again. Cheers.